It's important to understand the environment that the tetrapods were living in because if we want to understand the evolution and why they evolved, we have to understand the environment they were living in and how it changed through time. Determining the age of fossils is really important because it means that when we get the same fossils in other parts of the world, we know that the sediments they're found in are the same age. This period, about 360 million years ago, is an extremely important one in terms of the evolution of life on Earth. Prior to that time, all vertebrate animals dwelt in water. But after this time, we saw, for the first time, fully terrestrial tetrapods, that is, amphibian-like creatures that were able to walk on all four legs on land. We use a number of different techniques to understand the sedimentary rock succession at Burnmouth. Sandstones that were deposited in, by river systems are an important part of the succession. The primary way we do this is to create a sedimentary log. The diagrammatic representation, bed by bed, of the sedimentary rocks that are present. It enables us to understand the different rock types that are present and the sequence of their formation. In this site, I took a sample every 10 centimetres. Certain samples that are really interesting for us to investigate, we make a thin section, 30 microns in thickness. We can look at the really small microstructures, the composition and the fossils inside. These sandstone bodies are exposed across the wave cut platform at Burnmouth and to look at the changes in the sedimentary structures across the wave cut platform and within the sandstone, we used a hexacopter survey. The problem we had at Burnmouth is the rocks are on end. So we want to take that stand back cliff view. We've actually got to look at the rocks plan view and that's why we had to use the UAV. And this allows us to understand the environment and try and understand particularly the shapes of the rivers that were going through the system. And you can see that here. It's superimposed on a larger LIDAR survey. We can see the high resolution photographs that were taken by the hexacopter survey. Using blown up areas of the hexacopter survey, I started to map out the sedimentology that I could see on the shoreline. The detail on there here is exceptional and using some of the boulders on the platform I could locate myself easily. One of the techniques I've been doing is microfossil picking. I've been looking at sediment residues, so sieved sediment of fine particles, and picking out their microfossils inside. By doing this we can find out about the other animals that lived alongside tetrapods. As part of the project, we drilled a 500 metre deep borehole near Berwick-upon-Tweed through the early Carboniferous rocks. The borehole was fully cored, so we extracted a column of rock 500 metres long in a tube that is 100 millimetres diameter. The borehole cores are providing a continuous rock record of the events of that period. What we're doing here is to actually taking the core and uh, splitting it uh, along the sedimentary layering in the rock in order to find out the various fossil life forms that are present in this rock. Tapping along the layers, we can then split the rock and we can see whether there's any fossil material there. We've got some parts here where we have some small fragments of plant material. Palynology is the study of pollen and spores, but because these sediments are so old, pollen hadn't really evolved yet, so I study plant spores. My studies have shown that the species of spores present in the Norham Westmains Farm borehole sediments change as we move from the bottom or oldest sediments to the youngest ones at the top. The changes in the fossilised spores show how the environment changed throughout the early Carboniferous of the Scottish Midland Valley. If you travel back in time to the time that the tetrapods were living in, the first thing that would have struck you is how different the environment was, particularly how different the plants were. There were no grasses, they hadn't evolved yet, there were no flowers, it was a green world. There were trees, but they're not trees like today. They were actually things called lycopods, which are a type of tree fern, a club moss. 
If you were flying over in a helicopter, you'd have probably seen small lagoons, uh, little pools. There would have been little meandering rivers that would have been cut throughout. Also, we know it, it was very, very seasonal, monsoonal probably. In the, the dry months, it would have uh, dried out. And then in the wet months, whole areas would have completely flooded. For me, this project has been an extremely exciting experience. It's such a strong team of scientists with such well, a wide range of skills and experience in attempting to answer one of the most fundamental questions that remains with respect to the evolution of life on Earth. That is, the advancement of aquatic tetrapod forms through to the terrestrial environment.